Hey guys, how are we? Uh, this is about the 10th attempt at shooting this video. <laughs> Welcome to Athens in winter. And uh, I tell you what, it's just been one uh, interruption after another. So they have guys uh, that drive around in cars with big microphones and speakers and, and uh, go around and try and collect people's waste. Uh, you know, like uh, anything that's metal that can be recycled and sold. So uh, they can disrupt you every now and then, particularly when you're trying to shoot a video. Anyway, one of the things I wanted to sort of uh, bring up and bring to your attention was, because I haven't seen this covered by uh, any news outlet, but Reuters um, covered an article the other day, or a news event, where um, they war-gamed an attack on the economic or the financial system. So this was hosted in um, Jerusalem in Israel, and uh, participants were Israel, America, Thailand, Germany, Austria, uh, the World Bank, the Bank of International Settlements, the International Monetary Fund. Uh, so there's about 13 players in total. And basically what they wargamed was an attack on the financial system and uh, how they would go about um, you know, mitigating that and how it would play out. Problem is, is that they war game today and then they acted out tomorrow. And uh, we've seen this multiple times. So, let me tell you that to hack an economic system, to hack any, any network, any computer network at all, you have to have uh, people on the ground to penetrate that network. So they're basically installing hardware to access that network. To do that to the World Bank, the Bank of International Settlements, etc., you need to have a state actor pull that off. That is not something that some, you know, group of hackers or a teenage kid from a uh, basement pulls off. You need to insert. Um, you need to Im insert assets into those places to, um, to basically install that hardware. And uh, you need to have access to that infrastructure or that network with hardware. It's not something you can access remotely. As much as most people think that, it's just not the case. So, that will be my take on this if it goes down, and I suspect that it will. Um, this is going to try and reset the global economy, the Great Reset, and it will institute a brand new financial system. And this is what people need to be really concerned about. Because if you've got money in the bank, you could lose the entire lot. And uh, if you're an Australian, for example, you have a government back guarantee of about 250000 So one way to mitigate that risk is to um, say you had 750k sitting in the bank. You could basically spread that across three different financial institutions and uh, you would effectively have a government bank guarantee of 750000 so that's one way to mitigate your risk. The other way to do that is to put your um, savings in, uh, in cryptocurrency. And uh, rather than leaving it on an exchange, you would actually take it off the exchange and put it into a cold wallet. And um, I'm certainly not offering financial advice on this, but I'm just saying this is one way to uh, uh, mitigate your exposure to an event like this. Even for the uh, the Americans and the Israelis to war game this is a concern. So uh, they've been talking about this for some time, and now I think we're uh, we're getting ready for it for some reason. As I said, it will take a state actor to pull this off they will need to get physical access to those networks to hack them. 
This is not something that some, you know, kids in a basement are going to pull off. So, and you can imagine just how much security would be, you know, on the Bank of International Settlements. You're not going to get access to that network easily. So, bear that in mind, all banks are going to be heavily exposed to that. The other thing that concerns me is the level of government debt that we have at the moment. All Western governments are heavily leveraged. In classical economics, they say anything over 80% of GDP deficit is considered to be a failed state. Well, you've got the US and oh, look, I genuinely don't know what the figures are anymore. But I know at one stage, China was around 325% GDP deficit. And uh, technically we would say that's a failed state because basically you're building infrastructure on debt. You've got to pay that debt back. One way that governments do that is doing what the Germans did after World War II. They crashed the, uh, uh, World War I, sorry. They crashed the German mark they brought out a Reich mark at 10 times the value. It effectively eliminated nine tenths of their debt. So if they do attack the uh, financial system as we know it, you can expect a new international global cryptocurrency. And I suspect that's where your digital ID is going to come in. Uh, I think Australia's got a version of that called Smart ID, something like that. Um, and uh, that plugged into an existing um, that plugged into an existing uh, framework that they had developed. And um, yeah, I just forget the name of it. Oh, anyway. Uh, so, um, I think all this stuff has been worked on for some time. That's what I'm saying. And uh, for them to war game this, it, uh, it just smacks that uh, we're getting pretty close to it. So, either early next year, maybe mid to late next year, you could see uh, so-called actors uh, take down the uh, global financial infrastructure. And that means that we're going to have to um, bring out a new encrypted um, financial system and uh, with better encryption. And I just can't see uh, anyone buying that crap, particularly now we know exactly what's happened in the past. So um, just keep that in mind when you're uh, <laughs> thinking about relocating and how you're going to do things. Look, I'm not offering you financial advice. I'm just saying this is what was um, reported the other day by uh, routers and it didn't really make much of the uh, mainstream news, but it, was, it, it actually took place. And as I said, they war game it today and they play it out tomorrow. So... Be ready for that. You can mitigate your risk or exposure, and uh, there's some simple ways to do that. Um, I know there's another way as well, and that's buy physical gold and silver or buy physical assets. Um, but in saying that, I certainly wouldn't be buying a property in Australia ridiculously overpriced. So at the moment, we're just doing the initial stages of um, uh, trying to formulate a plan to um, migrate to uh, Mexico and uh, just very early stages yet and um, got a lot of work to do between now and that but we're just so you know what we're planning all right guys I just thought I'd share that with you and just say hey look keep that on your radar because um, because when they start wargaming things you know things are getting pretty serious but as I said when it does happen you'll know that it's a state actor it's the only way they can pull this off you need to get uh, people in um, I mean that's if these uh, institutions are not working with them right 
so that they can institute a new global financial system based on crypto and a new global taxation system that plugs directly into it. And you'll probably see every single uh, country in the world plug into that financial system and that uh, crypto. So you'll have a taxation system that'll be global and uh, that's where this is going. So anyway, oh, it's all good news. <laughs> all right, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this channel if you want uh, more information or my uh, views on things. Uh, you can go to overseasexiles.com and um, I'll post uh, basically the sort of uh, show uh, description on there and um, you'll be able to read, uh, read up through things and have a look at other articles. So overseasexile.com and um, the Facebook group Overseas Exiles and uh, join the discussion over there. But uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching.